welcome friends in this session we will discuss about the effect of fault resistance and pre fault power flow directions and magnitudes on distance relay performance in the last session we have discussed about the effect of infeed on distance relay performance especially the effect of infeed on distance relay reach settings in the first session we have already discussed about the reach settings of the various zones that is zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 in the first session while discussing about the reach settings we have uh, assumed a very simple system and then we have discussed all everything keeping in mind only a simplest of the system now we are introducing one level of complexity in each and every session in the last session we have introduced the first level of complexity by introducing the effect of infeed on distance relay reach settings in this session we are introducing the effect of fault resistance and pre fault power flow direction in magnitude on the performance of distance relay in the next session probably we will discuss about the load encroachment followed by power swing and then the series compensated line kindly note that you might be getting double notifications for each and every video session and this is due to the fact that each and every session is being recorded in both Hindi and English language. So don't get irritated. Just refer to the video session that suits you the most. That means you can refer either English session or Hindi session. Everything is exactly the same in both the session. But these sessions are created in both the languages depending upon the requirement of each and every viewers. Now without wasting further time, let us start with our topic that is fault resistance and power flow direction effect on distance protection. Before starting, just note that the materials for this session has been obtained from the open sources and basically two books, one the protective relaying by Blackboard and another the power system protection by PM Anderson has been referred for preparing this session. Also, kindly note that in this session, we will discuss about the effect of fault resistance and power flow direction by using a simple mathematical equation. These equations will be derived by using a very, very simple mathematics and then the physical significance of this mathematical equation will be explained to you and you will, after the end of this session, you will be able to understand what are the effects, how the pre-fault power flow direction and how the pre-fault power flow magnitude decides the performance of distance protection relay. So it is requested to kindly listen or kindly watch the whole session right from the beginning to the end so that you will be able to understand each and every concept in this session clearly. So now let us start. So uh, in this session basically what I have considered is uh, effect of fault resistance on distance relay performance. I am considering two simple system. One is the radial system only for the concept clarity, conceptual clarity and then we will consider the complex system involving the multiple sources. Uh, basically we will discuss the mathematical formulation by using two sources one at each end of the transmission lines that is one at bus M and one at bus N. In the first simple system we are considering one source behind the bus M then the, uh, there are second bus which is bus N. There is a transmission line connecting bus M to bus N and the total transmission line impedance between this bus M to bus N is ZMN. The XZMN is the fraction of impedance up to the point where the actual fault is. We are considering the fault at point F with fault resistance RF. Can you know that in the last session we have neglected the effect of RF but now we are considering the effect of fault resistance. IF is the fault current, 1 minus X times ZMN is the remaining impedance from the fault point to your next bus or to your N bus. Now, RM is the relay at the uh, bus M. Any note in this figure or in this simple diagram that the measured current by uh, this relay RM or the current available to this relay RM is IM and this current IM is equals to IF. The fault point voltage Vf is equals to Rf times If. Rf is the fault resistance and If is the fault current. Now If because it is equals to Im so this fault point voltage 
will be IM times RF and the voltage measured by this relay RM is basically IM times XZMN plus VF and VF is IM RF so the voltage measured by relay RM is X times ZMN plus RF times IM. Now the total impedance measured by this relay RM will be VM divided by IM that is the voltage measured by this relay divided by the current measured by this relay. So uh, when you divide everything over here by IM you will get X ZMN plus RF and kindly note that the total impedance measured by the relay is the summation of X ZMN. What is X ZMN? X ZMN is the fraction of impedance up to the fault point and now in the last session when we are not considering the effect of RF or effect of fault resistance then the total impedance measured by the relay will be only this point uh, only up to this point that is X ZMN. So your relay will operate correctly up to this point and you can use any characteristic you can use your circular characteristic that means plane impedance or more characteristics or offset more characteristics but once the effect of RF is introduced that we have also seen in the first session itself once the effect of RF is introduced then your, the impedance measured by the relay will be somewhat higher depending upon the magnitude of fault resistance. Now it might happen that if you are using a circular characteristic then this impedance ZM might not come inside your circular characteristic and your relay might not operate. So to avoid that situation generally it is stated in the first session also that to avoid that situation that is when your circular characteristic relay that is more relay or plane impedance relay or offset more relay all those relay have limited fault resistance coverage so what we are studying in the first session and what we have studied in the first session rather that uh, you must use a quadrilateral characteristic because it has a higher resistance coverage now this is again a very simple condition and this type of situation is uh, very rare in the uh, actual complex power system. So now we introduce one more level of complexity and that is we are considering now two sources one behind each bus one behind bus M other behind bus N. This is same point F the fault resistance is RF fault current is IF XZMN is the impedance fraction of impedance from bus M to the fault point similarly 1 minus X times ZMN is the fraction of impedance from the fault point F to the remote bus N. IN is the fault current fed by, fed by this source. IM is the fault current fed by this source. Total fault current IF which is the summation of IM plus IN and the fault point voltage is equals to IF times RF which is IM plus IN times RF. The voltage measured by this relay RM is equals to X times ZMN plus this VF which is IM plus IN times RF and if you calculate the impedance measured by this relay by the same method as we have calculated in the previous slide. So what you get is that the impedance measured by the relay is X ZMN plus 1 plus IN by IM times RF. Now if you see this equation actually the only difference between this equation and the, this equation is that here also the impedance measured by the relay is X ZMN plus RF but there is an additional term which is IN, time, IN by IM times RF. Now you know that in a complex AC system or in the simplest of a uh, simple AC system also the power flow between this bus M and this bus N is possible only when there is an angle difference between the uh, voltages at two bus. So that means the pow uh, power will be transported from bus M to bus N if the voltage at bus M is leading the voltage at bus N. Similarly if the voltage at bus M is lagging with the voltage at bus N then the power will be imported from bus N to bus M. And this is generally given by the simpler, uh, simple equation power equals to Vs by Vr, Vs Vr by x sin delta and delta is the angle difference between two bus voltages that you already know. Now if there is an angle difference between voltages then definitely there will be an angle difference between the current Im and In. So if there is a power export that means the power is being exported from bus M to bus N in that case your uh, voltage Vm is leading voltage Vn. That means your current IM will be leading to volt current IN. Similarly, in case of power import, IM will be lagging with I IN. So if there is an angle difference in IN by IM, now this factor IN by IM will have a reactive effect. It doesn't remain only resistance because when this uh, IN by IM will be only resistive when there is no phase difference between these two. 
now if there is any phase difference between i n by i m so when we calculate this ratio i n by i m it will be a reactive effect so this reactive effect will keep on increasing with your increase in fault resistance and also with the increase in power flow magnitude why because once the power flow magnitude increases then the angle difference between these two bus voltages will increase once the angle difference between the voltage is increase the angle difference between these two currents will increase once the angle difference between i n and i m increases then the ratio of i n by i m will have more and more effect on reactance so now this uh, reactive effect introduced by the power flow and additional resistive effect of fault resistance these two effect combined together will change the whole characteristic of operation of distance protection relay and that we will see in the next slide how in the first case when we were considering the simple radial system in that case what we are considering is that the in is equals to 0 in is equals to 0 that means it can be either a radial system or it may be a system which have source at both end but the power is uh, 0 that is uh, the line is at no load in that case i n will be 0 and your effect will be resistive only but once there is either power export or power import there will be an effect on reactance in case of power import your i m is lagging with i n so i n by i m will have a positive effect on reactance and your total reactance measured by the relay will increase similarly in case of power export or the power transport power transport in the forward direction your i n by i m magnitude or the because of phase compensation i n by i m ratio now will have a negative effect on reactance so your total reactance measured by the relay might come down so uh, what is uh, this effect basically this is the same diagram now this is two bus m and n zsm and zsn is the source impedance behind this bus m and bus n respectively em and en are two sources with voltage em and en behind this bus m and bus n respectively and ild is the load current now uh, f is the fault point and rf is the fault resistance im and in is the fault current contributed from bus m and bus n respectively now uh, in case the power is in uh, flow is in the reverse direction power flow in the reverse direction that means power is being imported at bus m from bus n in that case your i m is lagging with i n once i m is lagging with i n so i n by i m ratio will have a positive effect on re reactance and that means it might happen that now suppose your actual fault is here but because of your power flow in the reverse direction relay might see this at somewhere here and now in this case your actual fault was in zone 1 but relay see this fault in zone 2 and there is a chance that relay might not operate or if re uh, at all it operates then the operation will be delayed depending upon the time of operation of zone 2 second thing if the power flow is in the forward direction then it might happen that suppose now the fault is in the uh, zone 2 but due to your forward direction of power flow i m is now leading with i n and i f by i m ratio or simply i n by i m ratio or here i am considering i f by i m times r f basically this is 1 plus i n by i m times r f so if you consider this i n by i m and i m is leading why it is leading because the power flow is in the forward direction so now the reactance will reduce because of the reduction in reactance it might happen that the zone 2 fault will now come inside zone 1 and relay might operate incorrectly let us see the zone 2 fault in zone 1 and because zone 1 is instantaneous so relay will operate inadvertently it might happen in some cases that your fault is in zone 1 and power flow is in the forward direction and there is a high resistance fault in that case due to this effect of power flow and also due to the high resistance it might happen that the react, uh, total impedance measured up to the fault point is outside the zone 1 boundary is outside the zone 2 boundary and your relay might not operate so uh, this operation of distance protection relay depends upon two factor over here one the magnitude of fault resistance the higher the magnitude of fault resistance higher will be this effect and second the magnitude of total pre-fault power what is the, this meaning of total pre-fault power because higher the amount of power flow just prior to the fault higher will be the angle difference between the im and in if the power flow is very low suppose the power flow is in the range of 10 20 or 30 megawatt then the angle difference will be very low 
once the power flow increases, suppose 200, 300, or 400 megawatt, in that case, the angle difference between IM and IN will be higher. Once the angle difference is higher, then the your ratio IN by IM will have more and more effect on impedance measure. And this effect may be in the increasing direction or in the decreasing direction depending upon the direction of power flow. So your effect on distance protection depends upon three factors the measurement of total power prior to fault that means the amount of total power which is being exported or imported that means amount of power the power flow direction and also the fault resistance quadrilateral characteristics now if you assume from the first session where we were saying that the quadrilateral characteristic is huge because it has higher fault coverage now you see that even though quadrilateral characteristic is having a higher fault coverage it might happen that your fault doesn't falls inside your characteristic and relay might not operate. Now the possibility is that you can increase your fault resistance coverage but in that case it might happen that you, during the high loading conditions your uh, area comes inside the fault zone and during the high loading condition relay might operate. This uh, falls under the topic load encroachment which we will discuss separately. So. To summarize, in this session we have seen the effect of pre-fault power flow magnitude, the effect of pre-fault power flow direction whether it is import or export and the fault, uh, pre, uh, arc resistance or fault resistance on distance relay performance. I hope everything is clear up to this point. Thank you for watching this session. In the next session. We will discuss about load encroachment and its effect on distance relay performance. Also, we will discuss about power swing. What are the different methods used for detection of power swings? How power swing algorithm is designed in various relays? Also, we will discuss about series compensated lines and its uh, different challenges posed by the series compensated line on distance relaying, relay, relaying or distance relay performance that we will discuss in some separate video. Thanks for watching and if you like the video then please subscribe this channel for more such videos in future and also share this video with your friends. Keep watching. Thank you again.